So taking a moment, check in, experiencing yourself, your body, knowing if you're comfortable, you have everything you need to, to be warm enough and to be settled in your place. And we're going to begin with our little work using ujjayi breathing. So you've been practicing your ujjayi. You remember it's sort of imagining almost as if you're breathing through uh, the, the top of your breastbone or the base of your throat. And that sense of as if you could huff up a mirror with your breath. So there's that extra type of feeling. And you're huffing up the mirror through your nose. So it's a, got a slight sound to it. And then you bring the air in with that same huffing sense as if you could huff the areas of your lungs and fill those lungs as fully as is comfortable for you. And you may like to place a hand on your upper chest and a hand near your navel or midriff. But as you breathe in, you may feel that sense of your top hand, if you're using your jai, filling from the collarbones, gradually filling down, and finally filling the whole of the lungs and letting the belly move forward. And as you breathe out, that sense of drawing the belly back, emptying from the bottom, through the middle, all the way out from the top. So we're doing our wave pranayama. I'm going to breathe out first and send that breath away. That huff, that ujjayi. Lips are lightly touching and breathing in through the nose, filling the top, middle, and then the bottom. And emptying from the bottom, through the middle, out of the chest, all the way from the tops, just under the collarbones. Maybe a slight pause if it feels comfortable and then filling the top once again. So we retain some control in our belly area. Keep those abdominals slightly engaged as we fill. And we're doing it with your length of breath as is appropriate for you. And interestingly, as we continue this practice, as we engage more through those abdominals, you may feel that as we breathe out, there's a draw up through the pelvic muscles as well. So we draw up from the pelvis, lower abs, mid abs, upper abs, emptying, then the chest emptying, emptying, emptying. A really wonderful full empty, complete empty, without any strain as we use our ujjayi. And then we begin to fill from the top. And as we get to the midriff, we start to release the upper abdominals, the waist, the lower abdominals. And there may be a slight sense of a downward pressure on those pelvic muscles. And as we breathe out, we feel that lower belly drawing up and helping those internal, all those internal diaphragms lifting up, the pelvic muscles, the diaphragm, and finally up to the throat. So continue working for a few more moments as efficiently and effectively for you. And we're building up slowly, slightly longer breaths, perhaps starting at a count of four or five. And if you want to count, you could gradually build up your counts to six, seven, maybe even eight, but with practice and when it's really comfortable to do that. So the hands are feedback to feel that you're working from bottom to top as you exhale. 
top to bottom as you inhale. If you find you don't need that, you can release your hands down into Inanna Mudra or any other gesture that you feel is appropriate whilst you continue your wave pranayama. Two more deep breaths. And when you finish. To release any mudras that you have and experience your body as your breath settles back to its own rhythm. You may like to draw your hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra. And here you experience the breath slightly more in the chest area. Setting your intention for your practice. An intention that you might wish to establish today is that you will encompass your movements with your breath. That each movement is stimulated as you begin the breath. So the breath starts just ahead of the movement and continues just after the movement has been completed, ready to begin to move again after the breath has already started. And the movement finishes before the breath ends. So as an inhale, begin the inhale, take up the pose, move into the position. And at the end of the movement, you still have a little bit of space to continue to breathe in. You begin to breathe out and moving into the next gesture, movement, whatever it is. And then before you finish breathing out, you have completed the action. And that will help us to link our breath, our movement and our minds. I will envelop my gestures, my movements, my yoga with my breath. And we bow our heads to seal our intentions. And then we can let the hands release and open the eyes gently. So I'm now going to begin a sequence. And if you'd like to watch it through the first time, see what movements involve and how they may impact you. And then if you find any need modifications, I'll show you a few suggested modifications uh, afterwards. And then you can play around with it as we do it, as we go through it several times. So this is a moon salutation. Uh, that is one of the ones that is available uh, from the Kripalu Center and also in the Yin Sites uh, book by Bernie Clark. So it's it's used and, and should work quite well at, at working the body. And because it's the moon energy, it's slightly lower and uh, not so vibrant as a sun salutation, but it does challenge the body in a, a similar way. So it gives us a chance to do things. So for this one, we will start, when, when you come up, we'll start standing facing our long edge of the mat with our feet comfortably placed, not too wide apart, and the hands starting in Anjali Mudra. So watching the first rib set through to get the idea. 
So we begin with a breath out. Then we'll breathe in and stretch the arms up to the sky and you can part the arms here slightly. Lengthening through the right side of the body as you breathe out. Breathing in, coming back to the center. Breathing out. Lengthening through the left. Breathing in, coming back to the center. Stepping out to the right, turning the feet out as you need and dropping into what we call the goddess pose. And obviously you can step as wide as you need. Breathing in, the arms come wide, legs straight. You may adapt the feet, ready to take yourselves into Trikonasana. Breathing out, over to the right. From there, we're going to take ourselves down into what we call in the pyramid as we fold over that front leg. Now, if you can't reach the floor, keep your balance and rest your hands here. We'll come all the way down, stretching through the back of that right leg. From there, we move into a lunge, and it can be a high lunge with the back knee off or a low lunge with the back knee down. We bring the hands on the inside and move around to face that long edge and drop into the karate kid or a half squat, if that's accessible to you. We move into the middle once again, bring the feet back together into a full squat. And if you're able to, Anjali Mudra and pressing your knees apart. Heels can be off. We then switch sides, sending the right leg out into our right leg, left side squat. From there, we're going to rotate around, bringing the back toes onto the floor, readjusting into our high lunge. Well, knee off the ground lunge. So low lunge with the knee off the ground. Then we're moving into our pyramid once again on the other side. Readjusting our feet as we need to and peeling ourselves up into Trikonasana to the left. Breathing in, back to our star. Breathing out into our goddess. Breathing in, up to the ceiling. Breathing out, lengthening left. Breathing in, back to center. Breathing out, lengthening right. Breathing in, breathing out. So you're probably thinking, how the hell am I going to remember all that? Don't worry, you'll get there in the end. So one of the things I would say that if, as we come from, uh, or if you can do the, 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 the lunge and you come into your squat, if squat's not available, simply come into a slight squat, a high squat, and don't go down low. And then you've, in the middle, you can come into a forward bend rather than going into a squat if your knees don't like that and repeating those. So those are the variations I would suggest. With the lunge, remember you can put your knee on the ground if that's better for you. You can decide that. I like to have my knee off, but you can do whichever you like. Everything else, you do to the best of your ability without straining. So coming to the center of your mat, facing the long edge. Checking in with your body. You have a slight gap between your feet, not too far. And of course, as you're moving from one to the other, take your feet with you. So when you need to rotate your feet in order to find stability, do what is appropriate for you. That's most important, that you are stable and you are safe because otherwise you will fall over potentially. And we don't want that. And we're going to begin with our hands in prayer position. And with all learning, when we first begin, it takes a while. So when you first begin this sequence, there may be some wobbling, there may be an inability to meet your breath with the movements, but with practice, it will all come together. So take a moment here and breathe. Settle yourself into the earth. Feel your connection through your feet. Connect yourself with your breath. With your intention. And when you're ready, take a comfortable deep breath in. Breathe out. As you breathe in, stretch the arms up, if they're safe, and part them. 
As you breathe out, lengthening through your right side, going over to the left, breathing in, coming up to the middle, going over to the right, breathing out, breathing in, coming back to the middle, prepared to step out, step your right leg out as wide as you can and drop the elbows down to the sides and knees bent. Little squat, goddess pose. Straightening up, spread the arms out wide, Rearrange your feet, turn the right foot towards the short edge of the mat and tipping yourself over into your triangle. You don't need to come too low. Keep that sense of, sense of length through the right side of the body. And if you wish to, turn your head to look down towards your foot. Take a breath here. And breathe in. And as you breathe out, rotate your body, come onto the toes of the back foot if you need to. Rearrange those feet, then put the back heel down while you fold down your front leg. Looking for stretch through the back of the front leg. And then we go into a wider leg, stretching the back leg back, bending the front leg, knee over ankle into our lunge. Back knee could drop to the floor if you wish. Bring the hands on the inside of that right foot. Rotate around to face the long edge of your mat and drop into your half squat or karate kid. And here we can practice if you want to, foot can come forward, which will give you more balance to be able to come into a prayer position. If that's too challenging, please stay safe. Then breathing in, lifting up, moving into a squat, breathing out, coming down. Hands can stay in front for balance. Heels can be off or hands can come to prayer position. If you can't do the full squat, remember you can do a wide leg forward bend or a semi squat. Now when you're ready, sending your right leg out to the side. If you're still on your mat, if you're not, you need to shift up a little bit to the left. Into your karate kid again, if you want to turn that foot to the front, you have your balance, you can bring your hands to prayer. And then you're rotating around, so the toes of the back foot are on the floor. If you need to switch your front leg forward or drop your back knee down into your lunge. And then straightening your front leg, walk the back foot in to take you into that forward bend over your front leg, back leg stretch, deep breaths, head release. Reposition your right foot, ready to go into triangle. So the right hand, left hand is down, right hand reaches up to the sky, chest opens to the front, the long edge of your mat, and you're breathing into your left rib, right rib, sorry. Back up to your star, breathe in, breathe out, bend your knees over your toes, goddess. Bring the feet together, breathing in. And as you breathe out, left side first, stretch into the center, lengthen the right side, into the center, return to your start. So if you're not in the middle of your mat, you might want to return to it, as I'm not. Ready for round two. Breathe in. Breathe out, inhale up, lengthen, tip to the left, right side long. Breathe in, back to the center. Breathe out, left side long, feel the outside edge of that left foot. Breathe into the center, step out, breathe into the goddess. Breathe in to star. Breathe out to triangle. Breathing here, a few breaths. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, rotate around to stretch through the back of that right leg, straight legs. Hands can be higher up on your shin. Then stepping the left leg further back into your lunge or dropping that knee to the ground. Breathe, feel that stretch to the front of the left leg. Moving the body around either into your high squat or dropping all the way down if it's safe for your knees. 
Balancing with your hands or bringing your hands to your heart. Breathing in, breathing out to your squat in the middle. And we go back the other way. So we send the right leg out into our half squat. Hope you can come down if you're able to. Hands down, moving around, sliding that left foot forward if you need to, into your lunge on the other side, extending and opening through the right leg. Straightening the left leg, bringing the right leg in enough to be able to do your pyramid, holding down along your left leg. Preparing your feet in the right position for triangle. Taking your right arm up, lengthening through the right side of the body. A few breaths, breathing into the right side. Ujjayi. And then lifting yourself to star as you breathe in and dropping into your goddess as you breathe out. Breathing in, stepping arms go up. Breathing out, lengthening left side. Breathing into the center, exhaling the other way. Breathing in and closing. So we'll take that one more time to establish it into our bodies, into our minds. And then you can continue practicing another time to perfect it and find your breath wrapping around it. If you've already had sufficient, you may stop and simply watch. If you're happy to carry on one more time. Breathe out. Breathing in, stretching up. Over to the left, breathing out. To the center. Breathe out to the other side. Breathing in, into goddess. Breathing in to star. Breathing out, retain, turn the feet into trikonasana. A few breaths here. Breathing in. And rotating around into your pyramid, lengthening the back of the right leg. Breathing in, and as you breathe out, step that right leg further back into your high your lunge. And as you practice, if you wish to, of course, you can add things like a high, high lunge. Bring your hands up onto your thigh. And then turning up front into your half squat. To the right. Moving into your full squat in the center. Stretching your right leg out into your half squat left. Rotating around into your lunge. The knee could be down or you can lift up into a high lunge. And so either side of the foot or the leg and bringing the back foot in for your pyramid. Drop the head. Rearrange the feet, breathe in, and as you breathe out, float yourself up into your triangle. Trikonasana to the left, right side open. Inhale back to star, turning both feet out and breathing out into your goddess. 
Breathing in, stepping back to the center. Lengthen your left side as you breathe out. In. Out. In. And out. Taking a moment to be there, letting go of the arms, settling into your body, experiencing what you find. You may choose then to come down to a child's pose or lie on your back and stretch out into Shavasana or lie on your back and hug your knees in. So whichever of those poses you choose, just take yourself there to rest for a moment, to experience the sensations and the energies that have moved throughout your Chandra Namaskar moon salutation. So you may like to, if you're, if you're in a child pose, you may like to slide forwards to lie on your front, bring your forehead onto your hands. And if you're on your back, you may like to roll yourself over onto your front. And you can rest your, your forehead on your hands if that is comfortable, chin tucked down, or bring your arms alongside you and turn your head to one side. Spread your feet apart comfortably if you need to. And settling here in a prone position, inviting a sensation of the breath coming to the center of your body, that sense of expansion outwards. As you breathe in, the body is felt that the abdomen moves towards the floor and the spine moves away from the floor. And as you breathe out, the spine moves in towards the floor and the belly moves lighter away from the floor. It doesn't lift off the floor. It's gravity keeps it there. But we become aware of the sensation of the breath affecting the spine here. Your awareness using your ujjayi to feel yourself filling the lungs appropriately for you. And that lengthening, stretching, expanding that goes on through the ribs, through the belly, and moves the spine. And then when we breathe out, there's that letting go. And almost a sense, because we're facing down, of the spine dropping in towards the floor as we breathe out. That settling feeling. It isn't really contracting, it's settling into its own rest place. The contraction comes on the back of the spine when we do our back bends. We're going to begin by, if it's safe for you, and you may need to use a strap here, bringing your right heel to your buttock into the half bow. So your left hand could be underneath your forehead and you can bring your right leg up. And if you're able to take hold of it, use your hands, stretch and flatten through the front of the thigh and the pelvis. If you find you need to put a strap around your ankle, pull it up alongside you and use that to get your heel towards your buttock. As you're working with this, have a sense of the pelvis dropping down, pressing into the earth and extending out through the length of your front of the thigh. So you're almost sending your knee away from you. Not lifting it up necessarily at the moment, just extending it away. Allow the body to be there. 
and to stretch. And hold that stretch with the right leg in. Find your breath. As you continue to hold, if that sensation in the front of the thigh starts to diminish, you can either think that knee further away, think the pelvis closer to the earth, or even potentially push the foot into a straightened arm hand and lift the knee a little off if you can keep the pelvis down. And just adding that ability to stretch. Finding some release through the connective tissue in that quad area. Avoiding straining the knees or the ankles. And slowly releasing. Pausing there and experiencing that side. Perhaps aware of the difference between the two sides. And if you're resting your head on your hands, you could change hands, put your right hand underneath your forehead, let your left arm go. If you need to change your strap, put your strap onto the other ankle. If you have two straps, then it's always quite useful to put the straps, actually put them around the ankles fixed if they're yoga straps. And then you run two lines up either side of your mat. And then you're ready to grab one side, then the other side when you need to without rearranging your whole body. But at the moment, if you haven't already prepared that, then you can simply bend your left leg in and put the strap around as is safe for you. Checking in that we've got that thigh resting appropriately on the earth. And our intention is to get that knee in line with the, the pelvic bones. But obviously, if you start with the knee slightly out, because that's where it can go, as you hold, you may be able to bring it slightly closer. Find your breath. Settle into the sensation in the front of your thigh. Can I feel it? through the front of my hip at all, maybe, maybe not. Can I feel it through the front of my thigh? Not into the knee, but maybe slightly across the knee. If it's flesh, it's being stretched, not joint, it's being strained. And sinking the pelvis down with each breath out. Sending the knee away. Relaxing that thigh. The more you relax it, perhaps you can bring that heel a little closer. Or you may choose to send the knee a little further away, realign it, bring the knee in towards the other side a little. And those who wish to could stretch it up by pushing the foot into the hand and lifting the leg off, keeping the pelvis down. Remembering that we only take the alternative when the sensation has changed. If it's diminished, then we can move to the next stage, otherwise we stay. And slowly releasing that side and letting go. Pausing there to experience your body. And having lengthened through the front of the thighs, we've given ourselves more scope for lengthening the front of the body, the whole of the front of the body. So that will, hopefully, that will encourage the, the back bend to be more accessible. We're going to take a staged back bend now. We're going to take our time and we're going to gradually move further up 
to find where is the correct and appropriate place for us to be, uh, for you to be doing your backbend. And we're going to begin with the upper chest, finding any movement we've got there in the backbend and then gradually moving down towards the lumbar. The lumbar is the place that we normally simply bend, some of us, um, and we don't want a right angle bend only at the lumbar. We're looking for a smooth flow of back bend through the whole of the spine to the best of our ability, and that includes the neck. So by throwing the head back, we're creating another almost right angle bend in the neck, and we'd like to avoid that as well. So coming down to lie on your front, the forehead on the hands, if that's comfortable for you. And then you can lift yourself up and perhaps bring your elbows quite far forward and rest your two hands and your forehead in your hands. So your face is looking more or less straight down. Your chest is just off the floor. Your thighs are lengthened and released. Your tops of the feet are either resting on something if they need to be protected or they're flat on the floor. And your breath is flowing. To feel that sensation of the breath moving the body up and down on the floor. Think of dropping now the shoulders away from the ears and the breastbone, top of the breastbone, slightly further forward. And begin to get an extension through the very, very upper spine, thoracic spine where the ribs join in. And for some of you who think I'm not even bending backwards. Well, you are, but not very much. This is mostly neck and very upper thoracic vertebra. And then we can move the elbows slightly further towards you. Keep them about a shoulder width apart and then hook your hands perhaps under your cheek, on your cheek, cheeks on your hands. Whatever feels comfortable. Again, the forehead could be in the hands, so the face cupped in the hands. So there's a sense of length through the back of the neck still. And we've lifted up a little more, a little more, a few more ribs have come off the floor. Bottom of the breastbone and bottom ribs are still on the floor probably. And then we bring our awareness to the mid thoracic and we drop that towards the floor as the shoulder blades slide away down towards the waist. If you're feeling this somewhere between the shoulder blades, you are doing it. Keep breathing. Use those shoulders to float down and back. Make any adjustments to your elbows, hands and face that you need to, to feel a lengthening through the base of the skull up into the crown of the head, rather than tipping the crown of the head towards the bottom. Lengthen it away. And you can stay here if you have a, a rounded upper back, a kyphotic back, you may want to stay here. If you want to go further, you could lift yourself a little higher, bring the elbows under into sphinx. Arms can come together. That can help us to breathe into the chest. <coughs> Press those forearms down. Press the palms together, or the hands can be out in front, pressing the forearms and palms down into the floor. So we've listed up even higher, the pelvis is still down. Check your legs, you could take them wider if there's any pinching in your lower back, or closer if you feel you want to take it more. And then drop those shoulders again, roll them down. You feel you're moving that lengthening through. You still have the length and the contraction in the upper back mid-back, you're lengthening the front of the spine, contracting the back. And if you want to stay here, you can, or if you want to go a little further, hands can come forward, lift the elbows into your seal. But if you only feel this in your lumbar back, please go back to your sphinx. Slowly releasing yourself down, coming back to rest gently, gently, slowly. 
So that took us four minutes to get from when we started to the seal. And obviously some of you may wish to stay longer in the seal in a practice than we did, or longer in the Sphinx. And of course you could do the whole practice in any of those particular positions if you wish to, the whole four minutes. Or building up as we did just then. When you're ready, if you wish to, you can travel back to a child's pose, bringing your forearms alongside your ribs, engaging those abdominals and lifting up. If that's not great for your knees, then roll yourself over and bring your knees into your chest. So take your spine softly, softly into its natural primary curve and rest your head either on your hands or hug your knees into your chest. And slowly coming up to sit. You can sit on your bottom with your legs stretched out, or you could use a folded blanket underneath your sit bones, or if you have a block, you could use a block underneath your sit bones, allowing you to tilt your pelvis just a little more to find the front of those sit bones. Of course, your knees can stay slightly bent as you require at the moment. And you may choose to have your hands beside you for a little bit of support, if that's helpful. Taking your feet slightly apart, giving a little awareness to our feet. So as you breathe in, pull your toes up towards your face. And as you breathe out, point your feet away. Breathing in, pull your feet up, stretch through the backs of the legs. As you breathe out, point your feet away. Breathing in. Breathing out. Your breath, Ujjayi. Begin to breathe just before you move. Complete the breath after you finish moving. Two more times. And then taking the feet in the same direction, each of them, rolling around. If you're drawing circles with your toes, breathing in, breathing out. Pausing for a moment. Changing direction, breathing in, breathing out. And then resting, pausing, observing the legs. Bring your awareness to your right leg, taking hold if you can behind the leg and bringing the knee up towards you, still sitting towards the leg gently. This is going to ask us to use some of our, our center, our middle of the body, our strength to contain us and also be aware of what's going on in your, your hip flexors. So if you get any cramping or feeling weird there, then you may need to roll out your foot, rock it or change where exactly you pull that leg into your body. So bringing that leg in, and then if you're able to, engaging through the center, lift the heel off the ground, stretch it up, lower the leg down, pull the heel in, knee up, breathe out, stretch away, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Two more. Checking in. 
then changing sides. You may find one side is easier than the other. So when you're ready, breathe in. As you breathe out, stretch and release. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Three more. And when you're finished resting down and observing the legs, the hip flexors, and you stretch your hand in the back of the legs, and then you might want to wriggle your legs, give them a little shake off. If they're feeling a little tight. So our next practice is to begin to loosen up across the thighs. I'm just turning around to the front. You may be able to see more easily from that direction. We're going to bring the right leg up, bend the leg, and then drop it out to the side. If you're able to, take hold of your ankle, lift it up, and perhaps place it on top of your thigh. Just checking in with that. How does that feel? You could still be sitting on your, your, your cushion blocks or blankets, so please do that if that's needed. Now, if your knee is so high that it's uncomfortable, then what you can do is take the leg out and put the foot on the floor instead and have it there if that's more comfortable, or for your ankle if it's not comfortable on top of your thigh. If this is comfortable, then the hands can come on the inner thigh and gently press. The body stays upright and you're pressing lightly through that leg and feeling any stretches and sensations on the outside of that leg. Notice if you relax the leg, does if you relax it, does it allow you to move it a bit further? And then gently releasing it to the floor in between, if it will, and pressing it down there if you're able to. Use any padding you need under your ankle or knee. And from there, some people may be able to pull their heel a little closer to the middle or alternatively lift it up and pull it close to the top of the leg and drop that leg down. But please no torsioning of your knees in this. Only what is available to you and stay at another level, a different position, one that we've already done, or let your leg go if you're finding that this is too challenging for your knees or your ankles. Remember, it's your body and you have to be able to use your body for the rest of the day. <laughs> so you don't want to do any damage to it. And then slowly releasing that leg and sending it away. Give it a little wriggle, wiggle if you need to. Bring our awareness to the other side. And of course, you may have one side that's relatively good for that and the other side that's going to be challenged more. And if you find you need to make adaptations, changes to this side, then do that. If you're able to, lifting that foot up beyond the knuckle bone, have the knuckle bone off, otherwise you'll press into your thigh, and find out where this leg goes to. And often you'll find that they're different. Certainly are in mine. <laughs> so this one, got much more sensation in my hip, and the leg doesn't go down so far. So we're often uh, not as balanced as uh, we can think we are. Especially if we are one-sided, you know, right-handed or left-handed, we're always going to be dominant on that side. And that side is going to be used more, so the muscles are likely to be different sized on one side to the other. And then when you're ready, if you want to bring that foot in to middle, closer if you wish to, and explore pressing that leg down there. And that will be probably a different sensation in the hip and thigh area. May feel a lot easier, nicer <laughs> than the one where you've got your leg up. And doing what you can do, experiencing what you can experience. 
There's no need to go any further. You could stay here if that's where you want to stay. And for those who are have the capacity, you could bring the foot up as close to your, your top of the leg as possible and then encourage that leg down. And when the foot's turned up towards the sky in this position, then often the knee will drop a little further than it will when you've got your ankle and your foot facing outwards. So the rotation, but it all depends on the rotation of your hip and your knee, and we don't want to strain any of those. Some of us have had great external rotation in our hips, and some people have great internal rotation. Those who have great external rotation can do this more easily. I don't have that. I have better external <laughs> internal rotation. So this is fine for me. Uh, this one, not so great. Um, some people have the ability to do both if they have different shaped hips. Uh, sockets and, and they, they're not challenged particularly by either. Releasing that leg, let it go, give it a little shake off. Rinsing those legs. And then drawing the soles of the feet together if you're happy to do that. Or you could stretch the legs straight out to find those inner thigh lengthening stretches. Sitting on your block cushion as you wish to. And we're going to take ourselves forward into a forward bend. So remembering that what you're looking for is to find the front of your sit bones to all begin encouraging the pelvis forward. If forward bending isn't a possibility, stay upright. It's fine to do that. And imagine that your knees can touch the walls on either side. That's all you need to think. Think of extending that way rather than pushing down because the length comes from the inner thigh rather than anything behind. You're taking your awareness there, and beginning to, if it's comfortable, roll your body forward. So we get a back stretch and a stretch through the inner thigh, lengthening through those muscles. And that's our primary objective is the inner thigh. So if your legs are straight out to the side and you're tipping slightly forward, you can use your hands for support as a way of controlling the stretch. If you're letting your head go and your chest go, you may feel a lovely stretch along your, your back muscles. If there's any discomfort, strain, you change where you are. So you'll find the appropriate stretch for you. And initially stay. Accept what is. Let go of what was and have faith in what will be. Accept what is. And if you found things have changed, you might move slightly deeper into the pose. Let go of what was. Have faith in what will be. Experience your stretches, your stresses, and the body's ability to change, perhaps to accept and with ease. And now, where is the stretch? What is the maximum? Where are you feeling it most? Has it changed? Is it different from when you started? Heal yourself back up. You may want to use your hands and slide your legs away. So checking in with your body, what that feels like. So we stretch the inner thigh. We're going to come down now into a lying twist. And we're looking here to explore finding some stretch through the outside of the leg and hip. Now that may be easier or less easy for you to access. So you may want to watch initially and see what I'm doing and then decide which of those is right for you to copy. I'm just gonna move my candle out of the way so it doesn't get knocked over. And as we lay down, make sure you're safe. So if you find that you don't have the strength in your abdominals, you can lie on your side and roll over. Have anything you need to underneath your head to have your head in the right alignment. 
So a couple of blankets if you need to. And you've got space either side, which I don't have here, but I'm only going to demonstrate one side. So when you're ready, well, I'll show you what we're going to do first, but when you're ready, you'll have your arms, if you can, out to the sides, palms on the floor. And then we can do two ways. There are two ways to do this. You can either take your feet wide on your mats and your knees wide and drop your legs over to whichever side we're going to first. And this is where you'll find the stretch is what you're looking for through um, my left leg at the moment, which is the one dropping to the middle. So if I have a stretch there, then I'm enjoying that, then I would stay here. And if I wanted more, I could put my right foot on top of there, let that knee drop, and that would give me a bit more stretch, perhaps up through the outside of the hip, and maybe the side of the body. And then I could turn my head away if I wished to. That's one option. The other option is to bring the knees in, as we would do in a normal line twist and roll the body over. And then we can feel perhaps that stretch here and maybe up through the side of the body as well. And if we wish to then to crease this stretch, keeping the knees more or less on top of each other, extend the lower leg of the top, lower leg of the top leg and find a stretch through there. So those are the two options. Some people find they get that extra stretch if they tuck it under into twisted roots, and you might get more stretch. So those are two options and some variations within them. So when you're ready, you can come to lie on your back. Make sure you've got the space that you need. If you need to, of course, you can spin yourself around in the middle and then go to the same side, but obviously you'll be doing the other side for yourself. And if you're doing the knees carried over to one side, bring both knees onto the chest. If you're doing the leg separated one, bend the knees, feet on the floor, and step your feet apart. Turn your toes wherever they need to be. Make sure your knees going with your feet. Whenever it's wide enough, it's probably about the width of a mat, maybe a little wider. And then let both knees drop to the same side. So if you want to go to the left first to get your right side down first, it doesn't really matter which side you do first. And settle into that position. Feel that body and notice if you already have some stretch along the outside of your thigh, your IT band. And then depending on what's going on, if you have your knee dropped to the middle in the first option, is that stretch appropriate? If so, stay. If you have your knees together over to one side, do you have a stretch across that area? Is that appropriate? And we're staying for time, so there's no need to rush into the next move. No need to suddenly Increase that stretch, find the stretch, and be in the stretch. And when you feel ready, you could then check in. Do I need to manipulate anything? Do I need to move anything slightly to be in a better position? If you have the knee drop to the middle, then you may find that you want to put the other foot on top of that thigh to increase the weight and stretch. If you have your knees together, you could extend the lower leg of the top leg and give the weight of the foot will give you that extra, perhaps extra stretch. And then bringing your awareness back to your breath, where's your arm? particularly the arm on the opposite side to the legs. Is that in the appropriate position? Does it, is it letting go? Can you feel any release through the chest? The chest is rotated in the opposite direction to the legs and the head can follow that if it's comfortable. 
And sometimes it's nice to turn the head in the same direction as the legs and gives you a different stretch on your neck. These are all variations, possibilities for you to work with your body. And I would suggest that you wait for your body to invite you to make the changes. So that it comes from your senses, your body, the somatic feedback, rather than the brain saying, hey, you should be able to do, do, do. the ego, let's let that go. Let's find where we are and use what we have and explore the changes there. So staying for just a little longer, if you're comfortable, please come out if you need to. This is a three minute hold with slight variations happening during it. Softly easing out of that position in any safe way for yourself. And coming back to the center either with legs straight or knees hugged in. Take a moment to experience the sensations and particularly noticing any difference on the outside of the thigh that you stretched compared to the other side. Just be interested in the differences. And then we're going to prepare ourselves to go to the other side. So we can bend the legs, take the arms out to the sides. They don't have to be shoulder height. And if you're taking the wider leg version, walk your feet away and drop both knees in the opposite direction of the one you've already been in. So the other knee is in towards the midline of the body. If you're doing the other one, knees onto chest, hug the knees in and drop both knees to the side and let them rest. If, of course, if you need support, if you need bolsters or something to do this, you'll have used those blankets, whatever. So if the floor is not there, make the floor come to you with the use of props. And then begin to settle into the position, checking as you do, have I the stretch that I want? Have I found that outside edge of my thigh into perhaps my hip area, outside hip uh, rotators? Uh, is there that stretch coming? Have I some sensation there? In which case, yes, stay. Are my shoulders, chest, is that in the right place? Am I rotating away from my legs with my chest? So that's your ribs, your breastbone moving in the opposite direction, dropping the opposite shoulder blade, dropping the opposite shoulder blade down to the floor. And as you continue, you may notice any shifts and changes and want to bring the foot on top of the thigh if you're in the wide leg version or allowing the lower leg or the top leg to extend and hang down or rest on the floor depending on how close you are. You may have support between the legs if you're in a full twist. You may have something underneath the legs if you're in a full twist. You may even have props under your shoulder to support that. And your breath flows. And you might bring your awareness to the breath flowing into the side that you're twisted away from. So your chest is rotating away from your legs. And the side your legs, the opposite side to where your legs have gone is the side you're breathing into. Find your ujjayi. Enjoy the stretch, the sensation. You're facilitating change. Accept what is. Let go of what was.
few more wonderful breaths. And softly releasing, coming back to your center safely and appropriately for you, and perhaps sliding the legs away and letting them go. Returning to Shavasana or with your knees bent, feet on the floor, and letting go. Simply allow your body to be. How am I? Deep breaths, empty, comfortably, completely. You may choose to gently stretch your body or hug your body for a moment. When you feel ready, you can roll yourself over and bring yourself up to sit. We've invited our legs to stretch in most directions uh, that we have available to us. We're going to explore gently, safely, coming into a cross leg position. And this may not be available for everybody. Some of you may find that you want to sit on a couple of blankets folded or a block on a blanket or something to make your pelvis a little higher up to facilitate any range you have with your hips and knees. Doing exactly and only what is appropriate for you in this practice and stopping and desisting as soon as it, it fails to, to, to make any headway uh, and, and is potentially uh, of any discomfort to you. So I really recommend you do this well. We'll begin where we, we left off uh, just now and bring the right foot in towards the body. And you're either sitting on the floor or sitting on, on something behind you. And just checking in what that feels like. And where is that knee? You know, how high off the ground is that knee? We're not trying to push it anywhere. We're simply exploring where is it? Where, where is that leg? What's it feel like? What's it feel like in the foot? What's it feel like in the hip? What's it feel like in the knee? What's it doing? Where is it? And if it isn't reasonably close to the floor, then you know you're gonna to have to lift your pelvis up to get anywhere close to that. So you could put yourself up on one blanket or a block and see what happens then, and take it from there. Then we're releasing that leg, set that one out, notice the sensations in it, and bring the other leg in if that is okay to do. And feel that, notice what that looks like. Now, some of you may be really experienced and have been doing cross legs forever and this is all perfectly normal for you. Feels fine, doesn't do anything for other people. It will be higher, be more restricted, be challenging. So do what works for you. We are exploring. You're on a little adventure into your own body. Some people can, some people can't. And that's the way it is. So you do what you can. It'll be the can, the can cans. Bringing your other leg in that you had last time and perhaps popping it in front. See what that feels like. And if both knees are really high, this is what it's going to look like or feel like. And if you go up higher, you see my pelvis goes up, my knees appear to be lower down. They aren't, they just appear to be. This gives me all the length and space in the body. What does that feel like? Now, if you can't maintain this, 
You are very welcome to either bring your feet together in this position or stretch your legs out or straight. You do not have to stay in any cross leg position. If you are in your cross leg position, sitting up comfortably tall and taking your right hand, sorry, your left hand onto your right knee and gently turning around to your right. Rotating around, keeping the body upright and taking yourself into a rotation. Rotate the bottom ribs, the breastbone, the upper ribs, the shoulders, the head, the neck. Take another breath here. And then softly rotate back to your center. Changing sides, if you're able to, take the other hand onto the knee. Lift tall through the sides of the body, breathe in. As you breathe out, rotate bottom ribs, breastbone, upper ribs, shoulders, neck, head. And experience that rotating, that sense of the twist in your ribs safely. Breathe in, as you breathe out, unrotate. Some of you might want to, from here, explore leaning forward. Now, there may be no potential because there's no space for you to lean forward, in which case, place your hands behind and simply sit up tall. If you're able to lean forwards here, you can roll yourself forwards, just for a moment, to notice what the stretches are like in the legs, in the back. Are we still breathing? Send the sit bones down away from you and let the body inch forward if it wants to. And slowly walking yourself back up. And noticing which foot is in front. Release the legs. Give them a little shake off. Wiggle them, wriggle them. And for those who are able to, bring that same front leg in first. Check where it is, how it feels. And if you're able to, bring the other leg in front. Remember that there are alternatives. Soles the feet together, legs away. What does it feel like this side? Is it different? Quite likely it is. So we're going to take, uh, remember you're still lift, sitting up, so for this one you might find that you need to sit up or you didn't need to sit higher in the other way. And we're going to take our rotation, so we're going to go to the side of the front foot first. So round to the left, breathe in, lengthen, rotating ribs, breastbone, upper ribs, shoulders, neck, head. Breathing in, as you breathe out, coming back, sitting tall, breathing in, and as you rotate around to the other side. In your own head, think of those places, bottom, middle, top of your ribs. And then allow your head face to float around to look over towards that shoulder. Find your ujjayi breathing. Relax your teeth. Breathing in, returning as you breathe out. And once more, if you choose to, coming forward. Now remembering how it was last time, maybe different. 
go where you can go. Plug your sit bones down the front of them and slowly, if it's appropriate, allow yourself to fold forward. Observing the sensations. And those of us who always have the same foot in front may notice considerable differences. Breathe out, sink a little further. If you have that range. Plug the sit bones down. And then healing yourself up. Coming back to sit. Now releasing the legs, slide them away. Give them a little shake off. You've done a lot of work. And you may like to bend the legs, put the feet on the floor and let yourself do a few windshield wipers, windscreen wipers. And then shake them off. Now for those who do have that external hip rotation, in other words, they find this is easy and their knee comes all the way to the floor. Then there are possibilities. For those of you who are much easier and happier doing this type of movement, then you may find this is a step too far. It's a step too far for me, but I'm going to show you what you could do if you wish to. So with your, your right leg, you can bring it in as we did before, and notice how far off the floor it is. If the knee is fairly low to the floor, then you could do the next bit. If it's very high off the floor, I would recommend you stay there if it's comfortable or let it go. If you bring your foot up and your heel is coming in towards the groin and your sole of the foot is up towards the sky into a half lotus. And we're again looking, is the knee on the ground? If the knee is nearly on the ground, you can stay there for a moment without torsioning your knee or your ankle. If it's not, on the ground, as mine is not on the ground, then we need to be careful and not force it. Not ready to do it yet. If the knee is completely on the ground and everything is comfortable, then you may be ready. Let's release that leg, slide it away, give it a shake off. Bring the other leg in, just the foot in towards the groin first and notice how much distance we have between the knee and the floor. Now, if there's a lot of distance way up here, then you're never going to get anywhere near doing your, um, your lotus position at the moment. Just accept that and keep working with whatever you've got without straining. If it's reasonably close to the floor and feels okay, you could bring the other leg up and place it and see how close that comes to the floor. It's a slightly different feeling when you turn the foot up than it is when the leg's on the thigh. So remember we're rolling those thighs open in order to get here and if they don't roll open then you're never going to get there for the time being potentially never ever if that's the way your pelvis so your hip sockets are constructed so there are people who simply cannot do this it's bone impossible so if that's you don't worry about it that's you know we can all do some things other people can do this slide, I find this gets a lot lower than my right one, for whatever reason that is. Um, so, you know, if that's true for you, then you could then bring the other leg in, leaving that one on top. I wouldn't suggest that you go any further. But potentially, if this, my knee here could go all the way down, and this leg, and I could pull this foot up, then I could get that. But all I would do at the moment is break my ankle on my left and strain my knee on my right. So I'm not going there. But I can, if I want to, swap them over and have the other knee on top, or even bring that foot underneath and be in a half lotus position, which is where I go to. So if you're in a half lotus and you can lift that other foot up without any problem at all, then you can place it up on top of the other thigh into a lotus position. And you either can or you can't. So I really would suggest you don't strain. You don't want to get stuck. Um, and and uh, generally, often, often it, it, men have more external rotation than women. 
and can often do it more easily, but that's just a generalization. Release your legs, give them a shake off. And you now come to a comfortable position. So you could choose to have your bolster back again and sit up with cross-legged on your bolster, or you could use a bolster and kneel around it, not sit cross-legged at all, because you may have worn that out. And you can rest whichever foot you want to in front if you're crossing your legs. So you sit up tall on your bolster or your chair, whatever you have available to be beautifully upright through the sides of your body. And your breath is free to flow. And we're going to return to our wave breath. So we had our wave breath at the beginning where we allowed ourselves to use Ujjayi. And our intention was to begin to invite a longer breath. By controlling the breath, we can begin to lengthen the breath. So wherever you are with this practice, you may choose to return to that practice of having your hand on your upper chest and your belly and working from there, contracting the abdominals as you breathe out, retaining that contraction as you begin to breathe in to fill the chest first and then the lower body, whichever works for you. If you wish to, and you want to make your breathing a little deeper, a little stronger, potentially using a mudra, a hand gesture, then we could use Mira Mudra, which is the gesture of the wave or the ocean. And since we're thinking of a wave breath, the ocean might be appropriate. And it's not as simple as it seems, this gesture. And sometimes it can be quite challenging. And if you find it challenging, then simply let it go and have your hands back or your hands resting or in Nana Mudra, whatever works for you. But if you'd like to play with Mira Mudra, it's the thumb and little finger that touch on each hand. The first two fingers are straight in a, in a V shape, like victory. And then we bring the thumb and the little fingers together in a foursome, and the ring fingers touch in a pyramid. So we have that, that shape there. I'm going to move up to the camera to show you. So the first little finger and thumb come together, and then the ring fingers come together and the other two fingers stay apart. So we have this sort of triangle effect. So you might think of that as being the, um, the horizon and then going up to the sky. So in your position, wherever you are, if you'd like to adopt Mira Mudra, you can do it and it can rest comfortably near your navel or somewhere, or you have your hands on your body. And then sitting comfortably in any position, Close your eyes. Breathe out, lightly engage through your abdominals, closing and sending all the breath away. And then finding your ujjayi, that puffing in and out with the nose, breathe in and fill the top, middle, bottom. As the wave flows up the beach, and as you breathe out, engage pelvic muscles, lower belly, mid belly, upper belly, empty the chest as the ocean takes back the waters. So as you breathe in, you might visualize the sea floating up the sand, little pause. And as you breathe out, the sea flowing back into the body of the ocean. A long, flowing breath, filling top to bottom, emptying bottom to top. Controlling that with those abdominal muscles, which are auxiliary muscles for your breath.
Yoga mudra, the gesture of the ocean, is enhancing the breath. And it's good for breathing issues such as asthma, anything that's restricted in the lungs. We've added it to our way of pranayama. Darujayi breathe. If the gesture becomes too much, release it and continue with your wave breathing. And then bring your hands together at your heart. And send yourself a message of unconditional love. Accept what is. Let go of what was. Have faith in what will be. Aryam Babsat. Namaste.